Alright guys, so now we'll be looking at uh, cognitive behavior theory um, in personality, uh, some criticisms about it, and uh, the two learning processes of habituation and conditioning. So basically, um, this whole idea started um, as a re reaction and a result of uh, the psychodynamic psychoanalytical approach, which you looked before. Um, so basically, versus that. Why? Because it's basically, it's sort of very subjective, and basically all of those um, uh, criticisms that we have from before. So, with cognitive behavior theory, we have personality as the sum of our behaviors and of learning. Okay? So, they basically say that it's almost not even learning. It's almost not even, there's not even personality. It's basically just learning. Us getting... Uh, Stimulus and uh, response. Now, personality-wise, it's nomothetic, remember? Meaning that it's kind of uh, to do with the kind of universal, okay? It's universal, it's true of all people, um, and in that sense, it's kind of the same as psychodynamic theory. Now, our causes are found in the individual environment, and you can see them, okay? That's kind of the big one. It's all observable. In radical behaviorism, you you don't look at anything you can't see. But with cognitive behavior theory, you also consider um, what's in the brain, okay, and how you think about things. Uh, in radically, uh, radically, it's kind of like by age thirty, you're basically this is who you are. So, some treatments include cognitive behavior therapy, okay in which you kind of get them to, uh, again, it's all about the about thinking, changing the way they perceive and think about situations um, to ally or to help out with their problem. Systematic desensitization is when you pres you kind of present them uh, their um, whatever it is that, that's wrong with them, but slowly over time, so then it lessens. So for example, uh, they're uh, really scared of slugs, and so what you do is you kind of initially, you talk to them about slugs, okay? And then, and then you show them a picture of a slug, okay? And slowly, 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 you increase that, you desensitize it systematically, slowly, and then in the end, you actually, they, I don't know, they like, they actually hold it in their hand. Okay. okay. And then, kind of the, I guess it's, it would be complete in that sense. Aversion therapy is when you um, want to kind of ex get a, a behavior to be extinct. You want to change that behavior. So what you do is you associate it with something negative, okay? All right. So for example, you want someone uh, to stop drawing pictures of cats all the time. So every time you see them drawing a picture of cat, okay, you, um, I don't know, you slap their elbow, okay? And that hurts them. And then what they do is they associate the pain with the drawing of the cat, and they slowly start um, about drawing the cats. So you fix things out of here. Now, some criticism of it is uh, the deterministic nature of it, um, and kind of its over-dependence on animal research. Okay, so that's kind of a, a problem because we want to be very... Um, uh, we want to transfer it to the population. So we do little studies about rats, right? But we want to say things about humans. So it may be a problem to over to go from rats. Uh, the deterministic thing, by the way, it's um, kind of dehumanizing if you consider it as a criticism, okay? Because it kind of just uh, denies the existence of choice. And that kind of... Um, has a very big implication to uh, law systems and things like that, and ethically as well. So that could be a problem because it's so underlying. Uh, again, and it depends on really research is a bit bad, and no specific personality structure means um, 
it's not even a very strong behavior theory. So as a theory for personality, it's kind of like iffy. It's like, I don't know. It's not as strong as a personality theory as psychodynamic theory. Also, sometimes it's really simplistic because um, it's saying all we are is learned. Okay, so all we really are as people is the things we'll, we've learned. Um, and it also, um, it's just that they just look at the observed behavior, what we do from the outside, whereas sometimes it's important to look more inside. And they kind of do that with cognitive theory, but it's less. Okay? So thoughts, aspirations, emotions, okay? uh, unconscious desires and attitudes and our biology are neglected. So that could be a problem for us. Um, now, we'll look at habituation and conditioning in the next video. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.